Assassin's Creed has evolved over the past few years, and with this being the last in the new trilogy of games, does Assassin's Creed Valhalla bring Assassin's Creed back to Assassin's Creed? What's going on guys, Snickle here, and in today's video I'll be walking you through the most efficient way to get the Platinum Trophy in Assassin's Creed Valhalla for the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. There are a multitude of ways to tackle this huge open world, but this video will focus on maximizing the amount of fun while trying to minimize the amount of playthroughs and overall mindless grinding. With this massive open world, there are luckily no trophies that are missable. There should be no story spoilers, as I will not discuss anything specifically related to the story. This guide is meant mainly for people that have never played the game before, to help them map out how they could go about getting this platinum. As for a breakdown of the trophy list, it consists of 35 bronze, 14 silver, 1 gold, and of course 1 platinum with a total of 51 trophies. There are no missable trophies as discussed previously. There are 11 trophies that are specifically related to the campaign, meaning that as long as you complete the main story, you will not miss these. 13 of these trophies are related to some sort of exploration throughout the game. You will have to explore the entire map, and this can be either a blessing or a burden depending on what type of player you are. Three trophies are related to your settlement, which you will earn more near the end of the game. 19 trophies are random, meaning that you may need to set some of these up throughout playing through the game. Three trophies I would consider incidental, meaning that no matter what or how you play the game, you will earn these trophies. And lastly, there is one trophy that is a little grindy, but it can be combined while you are exploring if you are smart. There are no online trophies as the game has no online functionalities. Down in the description below, you will find my breakdown of the trophy list, along with a few links to some useful sites in regards to full text guides for the game. There will also be a link to a playlist with a bunch of trophy guides for the random trophies that you may need help with throughout your playthrough. I will also leave a full list of the order that I specifically earned my trophies. The best way of getting through this game is to pledge to each area when your power level is high enough. When you pledge to each area, you want to explore the entire area while doing the missions. This will help you to sweep through the map while you are at the proper level and also progress through the main story. You will need to pledge to each area to progress through the story naturally anyway. Doing this method will earn you XP to level up so that each different area with higher power levels will come more naturally instead of feeling like you have to grind to gain access to other missions and areas. Even though it will require a lot more time to explore and get through the story, it will help generally with having to grind things out after the entire story is complete. There are 11 trophies that are specifically related to the campaign, so as long as you complete the main story, you will earn these trophies no matter how you play, and they are not missable. I do want to take note that the trophies and the story in this game work a little differently than traditional Assassin's Creed games. Typically there are sequences that you have to complete in order to progress. This game uses a pledge system, so as long as you continue to pledge to whatever is available, you will progress naturally through the main story. Now let's talk about three trophies that I would consider incidental, meaning that you will no doubt earn these trophies while just naturally playing through the game. First is the trophy Rampage, which is to complete your first raid in England. This will come naturally when you first arrive in England, and you will need to complete raids throughout the entire map. Next up is the trophy We Are In The Endgame Now, which is to reach power level 280. While playing through the story, exploring, and doing side activities, you will earn this with no problem at all. Also, while going to power level 280, you will unlock and equip abilities. When you equip 8 abilities, you will earn the trophy Face My Might. With each of these trophies, there is no need to worry about them since you will just earn them while you're naturally playing through the game. Next up, we have a few trophies that are related specifically to the settlement that you'll take over as you land in England early in the game. Two of the trophies are tied to each other in regards to progression. The trophies are Builder and Home Sweet Home, which is to reach settlement level 3 and 6 respectively. 
Building and upgrading buildings will upgrade your settlement and you will be able to build and upgrade buildings by using resources that you find from raids and doing different arcs. The other trophy that is tied to the settlement is the trophy Home Decor, which is to place an item on each of the settlement cosmetic spots. There are a total of 16 spots that are specifically for the base game. If you're having any issues with determining which locations you need to place items on, check the video found in the Assassin's Creed Valhalla playlist in the description below. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of your playtime in this game, which is going to be the exploration that you're going to have to do. I just want to reiterate that the most efficient way of getting through this map and exploring is to explore areas that you pledge to at the time that you're completing that area's arc. This will make the exploring feel natural, and at the end game, you will only need to go back to a few places to clean a few things up. Assassin's Creed Valhalla has a total of 11 collectibles that you'll need to collect while going through the entirety of the map. The quote-unquote good news is that everything will need to be completed and explored for a trophy. Let's break down these collectibles and explain what you are expected to do to complete each one of them. If you're having issues with any of these, be sure to check the Assassin's Creed Valhalla playlist in the description below, where you'll find individual videos for almost all of the collectibles if you're having any issues. I do want to note that collectibles are found in different leveled areas, so you may not be able to access everything right at the beginning of the game, and also collectibles will be found on different maps throughout the game as well. Everything discussed will be shown on the map as either a gold, blue, or white orb. These are equivalent to the question marks in previous games, but detail different unknown areas around the map. The gold orbs will signify some sort of wealth, meaning ingots, armor, books of knowledge, and crafting materials. There are smaller gold orbs that are chest. They are not needed and only provide currency or items to trade and do not count for any trophies. The blue orbs signify quests, cairns, flytings, animus anomalies, daughters of Lyrian, and much more. These are the other major collectibles. And finally, the white orbs, which signify things like Roman artifacts, curse symbols, treasure maps, and many other things. The blue and white orbs can kind of be thought of as the same thing. The first collectible is something that you won't have to find everything in. The collectibles are treasure hoard rewards. You will only need to find five of these in order to earn the trophy Old School Treasure Hunt. While playing through the game, you will find treasure maps that you can use to find treasure hoards. These hoards will not be shown on the map. Now, having the maps will make it easier, but the maps are not needed in order to find the treasures. There is a video in the playlist in the description below that will show you the location of the first five treasure hoards that you can find early in order to get the trophy. The next collectible that we'll discuss are the standing stone puzzles, and after completing one, you will earn the trophy Tranquility. There will need to be 13 completed in total throughout all of the maps. These standing stone puzzles will require you to locate big stones that will have little bits of giant symbols on them. You will need to find the correct location in order for the symbols to line up overall. These will just take a little bit of time and exploration of the surrounding area to figure out where to connect the pieces of the symbol. Next, we have the collectible called Cairns. When you've completed three of these, you will earn the trophy Equilibrium, but there are a total of 13 that will need to be completed in total throughout all of the maps. These cairns will require you to stack a pile of rocks on top of each other to a height that will be shown by a line. These are by far the hardest collectible throughout the entire game and will require a lot of time and patience in order to complete them. Now, the next collectible will be a little reminiscent of the glyphs in Assassin's Creed 2, but a little modified. When going around the map, you will find areas that seem kind of glitched, and within that area, there will be these things called animus anomalies. These are kind of like parkour tracks that lead to an ending where there's a video clip. After completing one, you will earn the trophy, it's not a bug, it's a feature. There are a total of 10 of these anomalies, and once you complete all 10, you will earn the trophy, the hidden truth, after the final hidden truth video plays. Let's get into a few items where there will be a lot of them, but you will need to collect them in order to work towards the final trophy. First of these are the cursed symbols. There are a total of 40 of these throughout the maps, but once you complete 10, you will earn the trophy Dreamcatcher. These cursed symbols are easy to spot since the screen will create a vignette around the edges, and all you need to do is search for the heart around the area and destroy it. Up next, we have the Roman Collector Challenge, which are their own symbols around the map so they can't be missed. 
There are a total of 52 of these that will need to be collected throughout each of the maps. Now you can't only find these in order to complete them, but you must build at the museum at your settlement. Talk to Octavian and complete the quest that he gives you in London. After completing it, you can return the artifacts that you find to Octavian, and once you find all 52 of them and turn them in, you will earn the trophy Archaeologist. Up next, we have the Orlog Players, which is a little board game that you can play in major areas around the map. There are a total of 19 players that are shown around these maps that can be beaten, and once you beat all of them, you will earn the trophy Orlog Champion. Now I will give a quick explanation of how to beat these players with ease. All you need to do is roll and look for the dice that either have red dashes around them or have hands that you can steal tokens from your opponents. You want to save your tokens up until you have 12, which is when you can use your god favor to deal 8 damage. Just rinse and repeat this method until you beat all of your opponents. Now let's talk about the flightings, which I like to refer to as rat battles. There are a total of 16 of these that are shown around at the different maps, and once you battle them all and win, you will earn the trophy Slam Master. These flightings can be tricky, but you need to pay attention to what the other player is saying and you kind of want to roast them back, but they aren't too tricky to complete. So next up is something that's not necessarily shown on the map and it's tied to catching fish. There are a total of 19 different types of fish that need to be caught throughout the entirety of the map. Once you catch all 19, you will earn the trophy Good Catch. You can find the fish and the locations in the guide linked below. You will need to use the fishing rod in order to catch all the fish, and this will take a decent amount of patience in order to find and catch them all. The final few trophies are now tied to combat, which means that you'll need to be properly equipped and leveled in order to complete them. The first being to defeat the Daughters of Lyrian, Upon defeating one of them, you will earn the trophy Witch Hunter. There are a total of three daughters that will need to be defeated for a trophy later on, so make sure that you kill all three as you level up. Lastly, tied to combat are the legendary animals. There are a total of 10 of these that will need to be defeated throughout the entirety of the maps. Upon defeating all 10, you will earn the trophy Master Hunter. Again, you will need to be properly equipped and leveled up in order to fight and defeat these animals. After all of that and getting all of the collectibles done and finishing up everything on the map, you will earn the trophy Completionist all the way, which will require a lot of time and determination and will probably be the make it or break it for a lot of people when it comes to the Platinum, since it's essentially dozens of hours of a collectathon. Continue to persevere and take your time and you will eventually get through and finish everything the game has to offer from a minigame and exploration standpoint. This section is filled with a bunch of random trophies that can be earned at any time throughout the game. These aren't necessarily incidental and may require some sort of setup in order to complete them. You can check the trophy breakdown in the link in the description below in order to see what trophies I placed in this section. Also, if you're having any issues, be sure to again check the Assassin's Creed Valhalla playlist in the description below for video guides for any trophies that you may be having issues with. Now we can finally get into the final grind of the game. Now I know what you're thinking, I just did all of the exploration, how can there be even more that I need to do? This isn't necessarily a big grind, but it may require some research. The trophy that we're going for is Disorder of the Ancients, which is to eliminate all targets of the Order of the Ancients. Some people may consider this a spoiler, but it is an integral part of the game that's explained earlier on, and it's used in all of the new Assassin's Creed games. With that being said, there will be Orders of Ancients that you will need to take out while just naturally playing through the game and doing arcs, but you will need to tidy up the rest at some point. There are plenty of maps and videos that will show these locations, Technically, you should have to find info to figure out where exactly these ancients are, but you don't need to get the info to have them spawn. Just find all of the remaining Order of the Ancients to get the trophy. After completing everything previously discussed, you should earn this Platinum Trophy, Viking Legend. With Assassin's Creed taking a completely different direction in the past three games, Ubisoft promised this style to only be a trilogy, but will they continue it? Assassin's Creed Origins was a fresh take on the RPG style, while Odyssey threw everything that Assassin's Creed was out the window. Valhalla brought the AC back to Assassin's Creed, but it still provided a completely huge oversized map for absolutely no reason. 
Why do developers think that it's good to provide a world where people will visit something only one time and will take a ridiculous amount of hours to finish what a fraction of people will fully explore and complete? Compared to something that's more reasonably sized and timed that has content in areas that are more detailed and provide reason to come back and keep exploring. I just hope this is something that will be taken into consideration with open world games in the future. With that being said, playing through the entirety of the campaign and exploring everything that the game has to offer while going for the Platinum will take you more than 100 hours, which for some people is entirely too much time. So please Ubisoft, lower the size of the maps and bring Assassin's Creed back to what Assassin's Creed was created from. As of recording this video, there is DLC, but I would assume that there will be multiple others throughout the next few months, so you will need to complete these in order to get the 100% completion as well. I hope you did enjoy the video, and if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. Also, let me know your experience with the game. Did you like it, or was it too much to get through? If you did find this video enjoyable or informative, be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Anyway, I hope to see you around sometime soon.